Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be the last speaker. It's always the best possible slot. Uh, my name is Joa Särkka. I'm a chief information officer from a, a smaller equipment rental company called Renta. Uh, I'll be going through today with you on, on, on the kind of our journey to AI. Uh, what we've done, how we started off, what were the key points, key findings and, and how we led the, the transformation through and, and what does the, the digitalization mean, mean for, for us. Uh, I put the, put the title uh, Early Adapter, Improving Everyday Life with AI. We've heard huge numbers from, 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 uh, from McKinsey in the morning and we've, uh, we've heard really complex uh, technological term from our data scientists. So, so uh, for us in our everyday life, it's, it's, it's about improving it. First, just to give you an idea with what kind of muscles are we doing this, what is Renta, in few brief words. So we are a modern rental co construction uh, company, emphasize on the modern in this context. Uh, we're a four-year-old uh, uh, organization, so quite young. I myself joined Renta a bit under three years ago. Uh, we have four operating countries, so we, the main, main uh, business area for us is in the Nordic segment. Sweden is our biggest business area at the moment. Uh, turnover last year just under 200 million, uh, 700 employees, give or take a few, and, and then 75 depots. So this is just to give you an idea with what kind of muscles do we operate, what is the size of our business, uh, uh, talking about the business size and also the geographical uh, extending of, of, of our business. Uh, this is a picture I always like to come back to uh, uh, when, when we talk about the digitalization. And for those who are not representatives of equipment rental companies, this is what we do. This is what we've done uh, for almost as long as people have been building. They've been borrowing their neighbors' uh, neighbors' stones in the Stone Age. Uh, what we do is is we buy machinery. Mainly we buy machinery. Uh, we take it to our depots and then from depot we will rent the machine out to the customer. Customer uses the machine for a set amount of hours, days, weeks, years, or, 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 or well, not a decade, I don't think so, just years. Uh, and then eventually they'll return it back to us. And that's our key business process. That's how we make money. Uh, and, and that's the process we always have to remember when we talk about the digitalization, when we talk about the aspects of, of AI. Uh, by having drones flying around and making beautiful PowerPoints, that doesn't really add value. It doesn't really transform us as a company uh, to anywhere. That just looks nice on the website. This is the core business process, and that's what we look at when we start improving or start uh, adapting and, and developing new systems. And already in this picture, it's really interesting to see uh, we have so many different aspects that we can utilize different tools. We have buying the machines, what kind of machines should we buy, when should we buy the machines, who should we buy the machines from, when they come to our depot, how do we get them in the rental condition as fast as possible, when they go out to the customers, how can we ensure the right machine is at the right depot at the right time, uh, how can we ensure that the customer experience is best possible for them, how can we empower a customer uh, in, in using the, the machinery that we rented out to them, in, in best possible way? How can we ensure it doesn't break down on them? Can we possibly come up with solutions that customers can get through their work site with uh, two machines instead of four machines? Can we bring transparency elements? I'm just throwing hype words at your direction, but just to get you an idea what we can do and what are the possibilities. And that's why the, the rental space is tremendously uh, exciting because we have so many partners, we have so many, so many uh, possibilities for us to work with. Now this was the core business that we looked at and then we realized how to, we started thinking how, how can we then do the things. We have telematics, we have IT, we have rental system. Uh, how can we utilize it? And for that we built up a whole new division within Renta called Renta Digi Office. Um, Renta Digi Office does not bother itself with, with ERP systems, old ERP legacy system. It doesn't consider it, uh, bother itself about uh, uh, laptops or connectivity or, 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 or metadata in our telematics. It doesn't care about that. Uh, the, the, the function for DigiOffice is to create uh, solutions and services for business need. That is its very core and, uh, and that's the only reason why it exists uh, within, within Renta.
all the um, targets, all the solutions that is created, uh, the goals have been set by business, business leaders alone. And obviously our business listens to customers because again, that brings the revenue back to Renta. Uh, it's a virtual team within Renta. Uh, we have around 25 to 30 people from business across all of our business units and uh, same amount of uh, developers, data scientists, uh, you name it, it's there. And it's a virtual team within Renta. Also, because we understand we're not a software company, we are, again, equipment rental company. So in order for us to attract the top talent, we have to build up these ecosystems and we have to be able to, to, to find the people who know the data scientists. I, I, I don't know any data scientists. I, I know now we have Kasper and his team, but when I came to this, I didn't know any data scientists. I wouldn't know how to hire data scientists. That's not my problem as a CIO for equipment rental company. So we have to build up the ecosystem to find the right people to work with. Then uh, going into more about the, the AI itself, uh, understand what, why and how. Uh, this is not cheap, it's not free, you have to do investments. And when you do investments and you go and ask money from the board of, of directors, you also have to, have to understand what are you doing, why you're doing it and how you're doing it. The first one I already touched bases in the beginning is, is make sure that you actually impact some or, or impact or improve one of your core business processes. Don't be afraid to go in there, dig deep uh, uh, and improve that side. It's way easier to generate additional value to your organization when you're actually improving something that is already existing than again, making drones fly around, for example. Find the right partners, build up the ecosystem. Already said, I don't know any data scientists. Also, I didn't know any AWS architects or, or any of the other roles that we've been needing. Uh, when you are operating in construction, you necessarily don't have to have the talent internally. You can outsource it. You can get it from external parties as well, where you can jump through a lot of the hoops regarding the, the recruitment and what if it doesn't fly. So building up the right ecosystem. Also, uh, the, the talent that we require, it's, it's tremendously broad. I just did the math on my, on my way in the morning from Helsinki here. We have 25 companies involved in, in, in our DG Office team, 25 different companies, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, all kinds of things. Interaction with AI needs to be effortless for employees and customers. We've been hearing lots about the, the cool buzzwords, how do the AIs work, what is the logic behind them, that's really all cool. But if I go to our depot heads, uh, heads of depots and say, hey, this is an AI model, and then I tell them eight minutes how, how, how an uh, AI model works, they're just going to walk away. They, they are not really going to listen to me telling about that stuff. So the interaction needs to be effortless. Otherwise, it's not going to fly, at least in my personal experience. I've, that's the only way I've been able to get these things off the ground has been with, uh, with, with really effortless communication with, uh, with the end user. And don't make things too complicated. Again, bring the emphasis on the, on the, on the, on the work and, and in, the, in the implementation. Uh, make sure that you know what you do. The business leads the work. But again, if we confuse our sales personnel with, with, with AI models, it's going to be a long meeting. Uh, then we are here as an early adapters and, and, and to tell you about actually what we've done with, with AI. Now the model you see here is, is, is in a pilot mode. Uh, something that we've been collaborating with with Crack Unit and Upso quite heavily. So this is about prioritizing equipment inspections. So, so this is the process that happens when uh, customers have used the machine, they've rented out the machine, it's been there for, for X amount of days and it gets returned back to us. And this is the tool to help us guide uh, through the return inspection process to ensure that it is back into the rental condition as soon as possible. Um, that itself is not difficult. We just create an app with, with camera and, and few wizards and your machine comes in, rental system says, wash it, uh, change oil if needed, service it if hours are full, etc. Et That's pretty simple, 
process to do. But what we've done with the AI is we've used the uh, uh, preliminary now, the forecast model, or we've been looking at what is the likelihood that this machine will go out again, uh, let's say tomorrow afternoon. What is the demand on it? Uh, in Finland, we have four seasons, or at least we had a few years ago. When I left uh, Finland, it was plus six degrees, and that's really freaky from somebody from Finland in January. Uh, but we have strong seasons in, in Finland. That means that on the work sites, you really don't need heating in, in July. That's, that's, that doesn't serve anybody. So with this forecast model, we can also adapt to our strong seasons and ensure that the kind of machinery that is in a high demand when, when ground starts freezing up gets serviced faster. And for the machinery that we're using in the summertime, gets machine, uh, served faster when it's June, and July and, and August. Uh, and, and based on that, we are prioritizing the machines. And, uh, and when our employees come to our depots, and all 75 of them, in the morning when they start looking at through the uh, machinery, they will be rated according to XYZ data points, and then they will see stars and colors. And based on that, they're advised to service those machines first. Now, how we tested this, um, we actually did the forecast models and we ran through six of our depots. So we printed out uh, numbers and uh, we sat down with our employees uh, across Finland and went through, what do you think of this list? And that's the way we verified that our guys have been working in equipment rental for decades. We had a list and we asked, does this seem good to you? And they said, yes, how did you get it? We said, AI made it for you. <laughs> they were a bit skeptical at first, but after a few iterations, they were really excited about it. And so far we've been getting really good feedback, feedback on this. Obviously, it enables us, for us to, to serve our customer better uh, when we have with higher likelihood the machine serviced when, when customer comes to us. And it also ensures that we don't have to over invest into our existing fleet. We are a four-year-old company. Everybody knows these are not the cheapest things to buy. So it is within our own interest as well to be able to serve uh, with four machines, two customers in, instead of one, for example, when they are not, uh, not uh, idling in our depots, but they are back in the rental condition as, and as, as soon as possible. This is what we are doing now. This is, this is uh, uh, still a mock-up, but I would imagine we have this in production by very latest end of next month, Matthias. I'm looking at you, holding you accountable here. Um, yeah, this is what we're doing now. This is quite, this is the thing we already understand how it works and, and take it to production isn't gonna be, uh, isn't gonna be that uh, difficult. But in order for you to kind of be believable in what you do, you also have to know what you're gonna do next. The world is never ready. When you do one thing, you also have to know what's gonna happen after that, what's gonna happen after that, what's gonna happen after that. It's called a roadmap. And uh, I have a few examples here for you on, on what we're doing or thinking of doing in the next, next stages. Uh, this is, might be a bit specific for equipment rental people. They probably feel the pain, predict equipment return dates. Customer takes out the machine, says, I'm gonna return it next year, comes back next weekend. Well, thank you. Um, this is for us to better forecast, how do we again need to uh, update our fleet? Where do we need to put our machinery to? If we were able to look at for AI in, in customer behavior, in our, in our invoicing data, in our geolocation for our machinery, if we could based on that deduct already, well, this kind of machine went out on rent in this uh, depot to this customer. All right, well, based on DDDD, we say it's likely gonna come back in four weeks time and customer can say it's gonna come back next year, but it's just for us to improve our own internal processes and also improve our logistics. We have uh, our northernmost depot in Norway is, is close to Lofoten and, and the southern depot is in, in Bergen. So that's also a one stint that we rather not move machinery around if, if not possible. And these kind of tools helps us to, to forecast, forecast that demand and, and, and uh, ensure that we have the right kind of machinery in the right place when we know the estimated return date for it. Uh, and then more general uh, uh, equipment demand, we can target the right kind of purchases for right kind of machineries across our business areas. We already have four uh, business units, Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Poland. So already there we see a, a quite big uh, difference in what kind of machinery is needed. And uh, we have an idea, of course, what we need. We've been 
we have people with decades of experience in, in this field, but it'd be great to have also AI backing up those decisions. And, and in all of these cases, they are supporting something we are already doing. They are bringing more data, more information into our core business processes, and they are improving our everyday lives uh, through that. Then my last slide, what, what, what in the future? We see tremendous, uh, tremendous possibilities in AI. Uh, altogether, I believe at the moment we have 12 different initiatives where AI can possibly improve our everyday lives. And, uh, and overall, we have, a, we have great trust in it. There has been a lot of talk about machine replacing people. Of course, that's probably going to happen in the future, but we really see AI as extension of us. We see it for us to make better decisions in our everyday life. We, we see it as going to improve our customer satisfaction. It's going to be extension of, of, of our professionals and our people working. So we're not really seeing that you're going to see a robot uh, serving you the next time you come to Renda, at least not within the foreseeable future, but all the AI initiatives we have are to, to improve our life and, and to be extension of, of our um, um, employees. And then the last one about how to start adapting it, and I like this metaphor, one of my teammates told us we're struggling with, with some details, and he said that this feels like walking in the snow. Again, a few years back, we used to have snow in Finland, and when you have enough snow and it comes about ye high, and you know you should be getting somewhere around there, but you really don't see the path. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna you're gonna walk and you're gonna get a side trail and you realize, oh man, it's there. I'm gonna have to go back. So you're gonna take a few step backs and then you're gonna be walking on the path again. So this is something that we've done quite a few times, but but these things happen when there is no charted paths. Nobody's gonna say, all right, this is where you're gonna walk now. But it's like really gray area and the goal is somewhere there. And we tremble and we take side steps. So from my perspective, one of the most important things is to, is to be able to tolerate uh, failure and uh, learn from it and then come back, uh, back better after, after the first, second, third or fifth sidesteps that you, that you take. That's all the time I have for you today. Thank you. <laughs>